and of course the old favourite blowing bubbles because it gets us back in touch with our breath and they're so pretty as well so make sure you have a, a good little sensory corner um, and some great sensory tools and resources but even better than having a sensory corner is what my friends at the forest schools know all about and that is being in nature it has all the sensory um, tools right there the textures of sand and dirt or a soft wet rock as you can see in the picture there nature um, is, is the best classroom in terms of uh, nurturing the senses but if you're not a forest school or you, you don't get to go outside too often make sure you do have a, a corner or a space set aside in your room for well-being and this is where children can go um, and perhaps play with a few little fidget toys make sure there is some nature there you might want to have your little um, display of your coloured hat friends there or some other resources charts on the wall that remind children about the zones and do a bit of an audit of your room and your audit could look a little like this where you ask yourself the question how much sen sensory stimuli is going on in this space in terms of visual auditory tactile the smells are there calm down spaces are there quiet spaces how is everyone breathing how are the children breathing how are the educators breathing is it calm and slow and regulated or is it shallow breathing how much of nature has been integrated into the classroom uh, how are you role modeling to the children and then also how are your daily rhythms going is there a fairly predictable uh, rhythm and I, I use the word rhythm rather than routine because routine is quite a rigid thing whereas a rhythm has more of a flow and some days you know you may have a longer outside period than usual and then a, a small inside period but there's still a rhythm to your day so there, there's some of the things you can do to audit your own space and embed these concepts of strategies for self-regulation and well-being embed them into your day so that you don't do a special um, where we have a, a special day where we're doing self-regulation or well-being but it should be a lifestyle and there are so many other resources that we can draw upon like children's books like pig the pug or pete the cat and you know you can discuss with the children what kind of, um, where do you think Pig the Pug was on those zones? What kind of hat, what colour hat was he wearing that day? Pete the Cat, well he's, you know, he's really a bit of a green hat. No matter what happens to him, he stays pretty positive. So there are teachable moments, you know, throughout the day. And display some of these, you know, these sorts of resources around your room. And do a well-being check-in perhaps, you know, when you when you gather the children for your group times, maybe the first thing of the day, you can have a, have a bit of a check-in with each other. And I really do like that chart that um, our friends at Musgrave Hill Community Childcare had when they walked in and the ch children put their photo next to the image of whichever coloured hat they related to. So we're coming towards the end now of this presentation and I really appreciate your patience in um, coming with me on this journey and I, I do hope that you've um, gained some perspective some insight and you've done some reflective practice that you can then take back out into your your work and play with children with um, in, improve your practice and I know that you'll be um, happy to know that everything we have been discussing is aligned with the early years learning framework so area one for identity in 1.1 the elf says children feel safe secure 
and supported. So hopefully that's what we've been doing today, finding ways to ensure that feel, children feel safe, secure and supported. Identity 1.4 says children learn to interact in relation to others with care, empathy and respect. You know, our little green hat um, teaches us about that. And wellbeing in area 3.1 says that children become strong in their social and emotional well-being. So we have been exploring the ELF today and if you're doing notes for um, your reflective practice, I'd be sure to um, align your notes with those areas of the ELF. And when you're writing up your program, your daily programs of, of documenting what you've done with the children, be sure to note the areas of the ELF that you have addressed. And in terms of the national quality standards, today this presentation that you've engaged in with me, it's more than a presentation, I hope, because I've given you exercises to do as well. So this professional development experience has um, hopefully put you on the track for exceeding the standards because the three themes of exceeding are theme one is that we're embedding this in the service so it's something that we do on a day-to-day -day. it's not just a special event where we talk about where we do yoga we have a yoga teacher come and on a Friday afternoon we do yoga but we should be every day doing something for well-being theme number two is that this is informed by critical reflection now, that's really what we've been doing. We've been reflecting upon theories. We've drawn upon lots of different theories and frameworks. We've looked at them, we've unpacked them, and we've applied them to practice. So we're addressing theme number two today. Theme number three is that there's meaningful engagement with families and the community. So I would invite you to share this with your families. Um, and I also offer a workshop where I can come and present this material in a family friendly kind of little one hour workshop um, to share that with your families or you can take some of this information to your families as well so they are the three themes of exceeding and the areas of the um, national quality standards that we have explored today are quality area two children's health and safety especially 2.1.1, where wellbeing and comfort is discussed. Quality area five, our relationships with children, especially 5.1.1, positive educated to child interactions, and 5.2.2 is self-regulation. Each child is supported to regulate their behaviour. Uh, quality area six has been addressed, collaborative partnerships. So. 6.2.3 com community engagement so your service is building a relationship with me <laughs> and a person outside of your service in the wider community that you're collaborating with quality area seven um, governance and leadership 7.2.3 is about the development of professionals and we've definitely and hopefully engaged in professional development today. So thank you for sharing this time with me and go forth and enjoy. Okay, done. <laughs>